let's finish the calendar crates. So this is July's calendar crates and we're going to finish August to put on here and I'm going to show you how I did the magnets and washers. So you're going to get a little bit of a sneak peek if you're seeing this video of the new August calendar crates. So first of all, I'm just going to take everything off and you can see that I used three magnets. I used magnets on the piece and then washers on the stitching because then you only need one set of magnets. And I can't remember if I glued these down with E6000 or not, but if you are doing your calendar crates for the first time, you should probably use E6000 or a stronger glue than the hot glue to get them to stay. Also, the little piece is attached with a magnet and washer. So it just fits right in there. And I'm going to apologize for my nails. I've been doing a lot of gardening and they just are not coming clean. <laughs> Once again, the, the wooden piece was originally from Hobby Lobby. It mm -hmm. comes with the glass and the three hooks already on it. This is still, the, this is how they keep it in there for transport. So I just left it in case I need it to attach something. The wreath something. is from? Uh, I think it was, it, it was either from Target or walmart but you can find little wreaths like this any place and then just use that okay and then i added this bow with some floral wire which i will end up removing so for august calendar crates the uh colors you're going to use in the priscilla's pretty plaids and the chelsea's checks are both black so you're going to use uh, Chelsea's checks in black and white and then Priscilla's plaids also in black and white. Okay, so I have three sticky boards cut. One, or actually four. One is a seven by seven, which is for the stitching. Then I have an eight by eight, which is our first layer and that's the Chelsea's checks fabrics will go on it. Then we have a nine by nine, which the Priscilla's pretty plaids will go on. So those pieces of sticky board plus a three and a half by three, which is for the small piece. So I think we're gonna do the small piece first. I'm gonna get this out of the way. And this is your first glimpse of the new calendar crates unless you saw it in our video or maybe there'll be a post before then. But it's sunflower themed, sunflowers and bees. So the stitching of course for us has been ironed. We flip the stitching over onto like a white cloth. A white towel. A white towel and uh, iron the back of it. You can use steam if you have some deep wrinkles. This is the small piece. Okay, and, and the first one I use batting, so I'm gonna use batting again. This is just scrap 80 by 80, 20 um, quilters battery that she had. You right. know, when you have excess for a quilt, she just keeps the excess. So I remove the sticky part and just stick it on the batting and then cut around it. If you're new here to cut all of her sticky boards, she uses a tonic guillotine trimmer. It's in our Amazon shop. Uh, it's meant for paper, but it cuts the sticky board just fine. Okay, so I have this all cut down, and I'm going to turn this over, and just, you can see where the stitches end and where you need to place it. And then I take my hands and wrap it around just to make sure that everything's in the and it fits perfectly on there. So I flipped it back over and I'm gonna put a dot of glue in the corner and fold it at a 90 degree angle. And I'm gonna do that for every corner. Pull tight, but not so tight that your corners go through your fabric. I forgot to get a piece of parchment paper. And 
like to do this for the glue so I don't get it on the counter. All right, so then I like to check again one more time and make sure that everything's gonna be included in the piece and it is. So then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do the longest ends first. Just draw a line of glue and fold this up and press with your fingers. Then flip it over and do the, the next long side. and flip it back and forth so that you can see whether you have everything straight. Like on the bottom, you just wanna make sure everything's straight. And then I'll do the last two sides. Yes, we know her glue gun isn't pretty. Oh, sorry, I should have cleaned that. <laughs> I used to always clean it like with the back of my scissors, but I haven't had time lately. Okay, so there we are, we're all in there, but you can see that the corners are a little bit like not pointy. So we're gonna go back in and put just a little tiny, tiny bit of glue. Sometimes just enough that's on the edges of your glue gun, the nozzle will be enough for it. And then just pinch it. I was telling Chelsea that last week I glued my thumb and my index finger together. <laughs> And I had to wait for the glue to, to cool off before I could peel it apart because it was taking my skin. Uh, it was bad. Caution, glue guns are hot. Yeah, have water by you if you're... And don't put too much in these corners because it will get on your fingers and also it might get on your stitching, which you don't want. Okay, so now we're all pointy. And you can use your fingers to form those points. Now, we already have a magnet there. So, okay, so I had a little bit of a problem when I went to go stick this in there with the, the sticky board cut at three and a half. I might've cut it a little bit big, but go like one, one notch underneath the three and a half if you're putting batting to allow for your fabric. So I had to go downstairs and trim off my sticky board just a little bit to get it all to fit, but you can't tell on the design at all. So now I'm gonna show you how to attach a washer to this. I had them, what did I do with them? They're right here. Oh, okay. Okay, so there's already a magnet on here. And what I would do then is put the washer on there Draw a line of glue around the outside of this. Be careful not to get it on the magnet because then it won't pull off when you want to get it off. And then just place this right in the center. And just hold it until it's dry and then your little piece is all done. Now you could add some rickrack around the bottom and the top or a, like a little bit more fabric, but I just wanted to keep it simple. So there's July's and there's August. And this is so small to have to store. All right, so now we're gonna do the sticky boards for the big piece. And the first one I'm gonna do is the eight by eight size. I'm gonna remove the, the part that keeps the sticky sticky. And I'm gonna line this up like in between the, the black diamonds. And then try to get it so that on the sides it's the same. Sticky board is forgiving, so if you place it down wrong, you can just peel it back up and try again. And then I'm going to trim off some of this extra fabric. She does about an inch of a border. So if you're looking to um, keep your 
pretty plaids or Chelsea's checks, um, like if you're trying to right. use, economically I'm, I'm, use them. Right. Mm -hmm. I am very frugal when I, I like lay it on there and I cut around it. But since I was coming upstairs with it and I needed to make sure that my fabric was going to be good. So this board is... Eight by eight. Eight by eight. So she would probably do a nine by nine piece of fabric. If I'm exactly lined up right. on the squares. Sure. Yes. So maybe give yourself an extra half inch. Okay, so I'm going to... But I know many people wouldn't want to cut off no. this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do it the same way we did the little piece where you do the corners and the 90 degree angles. And it's really important that you get this straight across because then that way you don't have as big a gaps in your corners. When I was at Costco, they didn't have like the big rolls of parchment paper. They just had these parchment paper sheets. I don't like this because I like a bigger piece of parchment paper. <laughs> Okay, and then we'll start at one side and... They did have some free samples the other day when we went there. Mm. There's never eat those. And do all four sides. And if you see a problem, like if you're using checks like this and your pattern is going off or whatever, you can always stop and undo the glue and restart. Okay. Make sure it's all smoothed on the front. And then we'll do the corners the same way. Just a little tiny bit of glue in the corners. This is that glue that my fingers stuck together with. I can feel it sticking on my fingers. My other stuff like peels right off. Okay, so there's your eight by eight piece and this will go, this is the one that goes underneath the stitching. Now we're going to the nine by nine. We're using the bigger plaid for this one. Priscilla's pretty plaids in the black and white. And again, we're going to remove the sticky part that keeps the sticky sticky. And on here, I'm going to, I'm, what I like to do on the bigger plaids is I like to go in the gray areas. It's easier to get it straight. The striped boxes. Okay, that looks pretty good. See how if you do it in the gray area, it gives you that, um, it almost looks like rickrack -rick across the top. I like that look. All right, and then I'm going to trim this. People who aren't frugal with their fabric are looking at it like, oh! <laughs> I don't think that's it that much. <laughs> all right, same thing again, all four corners. With my little tiny piece of parchment paper. Okay, and then we'll fold up the side. I just got some glue on the fabric, so when that happens, you need to work fast. Like, it, it was on the fabric, that's not gonna show, but if it gets a lump in there, then you're not gonna be able to get it flat. So we're all glued down on the sides. Now we'll do the corners. Just a little tiny bit and then squeeze it. I hope your fingers don't glue together.
And that's all four corners. Okay, so now we can take these two and glue them together. Now at this point, if you wanted to add rickrack, you could do rickrack on the bottom around them or, you know, just do it over the edges or whatever. But I'm not doing rickrack. I'm just doing it. So what I like to do is draw a line all the way around. And then try to get this as even as possible. And then just press down. Cute. Okay. Then we're gonna lay that to the side. Now the big piece. Da -da -da -da. So there's the August calendar crates. Got the bee scops, the buffalo plaid sunflowers that are like, mm. So I did iron both of the pieces, the little piece and this piece. And then I will trim this down so it's a little bit more even. Ironed and lint rolled. I didn't lint roll it yet. Oh. <laughs> it's not bad. Okay, so we're all set. Do you love it? <laughs> it's, it's fancy sunflower seeds. Okay, so I had previously cut the seven by seven piece of sticky board. So I'm gonna flip this over. You're getting two reveals today. The <laughs> August calendar crates and the back of your stitching. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry that you have to be subjected to that. <laughs> this one actually isn't that bad. Kim is rolling over right now. I mean, normally there's enough threads on the back that you can <laughs> stitch another project. It's not that bad. Don't make me feel guilty. <laughs> I'm not. Stitch how you want to stitch. That's our motto. Okay, I removed the <laughs> piece that keeps it to to be sticky. So what I do when I'm doing a cross stitch is I line it up on the bottom and then I just let it drop. I of course turn it over and check. You wanna make sure that the gap, like if you're leaving any excess black, if you're not going stitch to stitch on the sides, that it's even on both sides. That's why she doesn't leave a lot of room on the border of the No, seat. I just don't, I don't like the look where there's a lot of cross stitch fabric left over. I mean, on some patterns, but not the type of things that we stitch. I don't like that. Okay, so we're, we're even. I got it on the first try. We're going to do the same thing. The corners, tight, but not so tight that it pokes through. And make sure they're straight across right here so that you don't get the the big gaps in the corners. Okay, so there's all four. Now we're gonna start on the sides. And she like rolls up the fabric using her fingers. I push she it, yes. And you can see the glue coming. But just keep, if this is like your first piece that you're doing, just keep checking and make sure that it's still straight because if it's not, you can pull it apart. And this is, you, you kind of want to use a little bit of force to make sure that, that you get this shoved up and it's not lumpy. Sorry, <laughs> I'm like wandering all over. <laughs> it's this little piece of parchment paper. <laughs> all right, and when I do the stitching, I do the opposite sides and then I do the other ends. I don't necessarily do that when I'm just doing the fabric, but for some reason... In the stitching, I always do that just to make sure that it's all even. Okay, we're coming along. We just have the one side to do, and then I'll go back and I'll fix the corners. Seal the butt cracks. So many of you already have your July stitched. They all look so pretty. 
Mm -hmm. And some have made changes to them that are really mm -hmm. pretty. Just pinch it hard until it's pointy. And these will be shipping out the June. First Monday of June. Okay, so there we are. We're all square, all centered. And now we're going to take our two pieces of fabric cover board. It, oh, it looks so pretty. We're going to mount this in the center. I do the same thing where I draw the glue all over on the outside. And then just press it down. There you go. Now we're gonna take our piece. Okay, so we we are all set. We, we have two pieces of sticky board with fabric. We have the stitching and we already have the magnets on here. So what we're gonna do is take the washers and put one on each. And I, I tried to do this with two magnets and it was not strong enough, so I did the three. But if you want it really strong, you could probably do four. Just do them that way. I forgot, this had a basket on here that we had to cut off. Did we already say right. that? We, that's what those holes are. I thought it came, It there was a basket on it. So when you're looking at the- Yeah, there's a wire basket. Yes. All right, so be careful again, going around these washers so you don't get it on the magnet. The worst that can happen is the magnet will come off too and then you just need to re-glue it. All right, and then you put this. Put it on upside down. <laughs> Pretty. It's really hard to see if it's straight because it, I'm so high up compared to what I'm usually like. You need a booster chip? Mm-hmm. And what then decorating with? for the jar, I have the greenery that I used the last time. I think I'm going to use the cotton branches again, too. Can you move it? Mm -hmm. Get in there. <laughs> and then I found these sunflowers at Walmart. They're 98 cents. So you can't beat that. They might have come with another flower on here too. I'm not sure. <laughs> you already cut off. That I already used. Maybe not. But they have sunflowers at Michael's. They have sunflowers at Hobby Lobby. You can get wherever you want. I might not be able to use the cotton branches in the jar. All right, and then I brought ribbon up to tie around the jar. I have this black. This is from the ribbon section at Hobby Lobby in the fabric department, not the like craft ribbon. No, it is not. Mm. 
you can play with this if you if you don't want all the sunflowers in there. You could just do one or. There, that looks good. Are we all in the picture? Yes. Done. So there you go. There's how you finish your calendar crates, and if you use the magnets on the 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 wooden pieces themselves, then you only need to buy washers every time, so it's really cheap. And then it's really easy to store these because they're so small and flat. Here's the July. And the small piece that goes with it. You can just get one of those little Rubbermaid containers from Walmart and just store all your little pieces in it along with your whatever you use in your jar. So thanks for finishing with me today and I hope you have a great day.